Night. It was hot and muggy, and it has cooled off dramatically here tonight. It is absolutely a perfect night for baseball. You can see John Gibbons has got his jacket on tonight. That's how much it has cooled off. And I think overall, everybody's surprised. It's 18 degrees at the start of this game tonight. Devin Travis back in the leadoff spot. He's in the lineup tonight. He got half the game off last night. Josh Donaldson driving a six-game hit streak. Ten for 26 during that time with six RBIs. He had another two-hit game last night. Chris Colabello, since he's called up from Buffalo, has been swinging a red-hot bat. He's 14 for 26. Colabello has been the most pleasant surprise coming out of nowhere for this Blue Jays ball club. And keep it up. He has been swinging a red-hot bat. This is Miguel Gonzalez who makes his seventh start of the season, looking to get back on track. After a disappointing outing last Friday, that was against the Yankees. He pitched four innings, allowed five runs on five hits with two walks and took his second loss of the season. That loss snapped a three-game winning streak. Gonzalez has a 6-2 and two career record with a very good earned run average versus the Blue Jays in his career. 2.64, that's 11 games against the Blue Jays. This is just his third start here at home. Evan Travis is set. Gonzalez has the sign. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Upstairs for a ball, and we are underway. We mentioned Travis. He came into the game as a pinch runner late in the game and actually scored two runs. He had one at bat, but he scored two runs. There's a fastball, and it's one and one. A little day off yesterday for Devin Travis. I was talking to him around the batting cage today and said, I got to get back to my strength, and that is shooting the ball to right center field. I got to think about hitting the ball over there and then adjust. That's a good idea to have that kind of mindset against Gonzalez. He's going to throw you a lot of pitches out over the plate that you can put the bat on the ball. But at the same time, I don't think you can be that locked into a particular pattern and just give up everything else. But I think the fastball is going to be a key for yeah, him. Yeah, he throws a lot of fastballs, Miguel Gonzalez. There's a strikeout. They're trying to go in and missed all the way across the plate. Let's take a look at that scatter report for Miguel Gonzalez, the right-hander for the Baltimore Orioles. The fastball, I think, is going to be very key for him. He'll throw it 57% of the time. He's got a slider, a curveball, and a splitter that he throws about 14% of the time. A splitter especially dangerous against the right-hander hitters. This is the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. Had a three RBI game last night. Donaldson, another multi hit game. Two for five in that ball game. What a cut. That's the pitch he was looking for, and he turned it loose. He's not going to get cheated, especially when he knows he's going to get the, his share of fastballs. And Donaldson looking to get the Blue Jays on the board quickly. That'll loosen up your back. Yeah. <laughs> cool night tonight. That'll loosen him up. Ball and a strike to the third baseman. They'll cut it off the plate outside. The appeal down to first base. Alfonso Marquez had no swing. Two balls and a strike to Donaldson. Josh has a six game hit streak as we mentioned he has driven in six RBI's over the course of those six games. Same pitch same spot different yeah. result. Yeah, he was looking for the fastball there that front shoulder leaked out just a little bit. He's very disciplined hitter. I think Josh Donaldson and can hit the ball all over the ballpark. I was looking at some of his stats today. He's got 21 hits to center field this season combined. To left field and right field, he's got 22. So half of his hits are right back through the middle. Well, what that does is it allows you to let the ball travel a little bit deeper in the hitting zone, and then you can identify, of course, whether it's a fastball or a breaking pitch. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about right there. 21 hits, almost half of his hits to dead center field. That's why I was surprised a little bit how that front shoulder opened up on that 2 1 pitch a couple of pitches ago. Down and in. Donaldson batting ahead of Bautista. As he continues to serve as the DH, he was one for four in last night's game.
A one out walk, a strikeout, and a walk for Gonzalez to start the game. Let's take a look at the defense for the Orioles. They had a rough night last night. They committed three errors in the field. Tonight it's David Lowe, Adam Jones, and Alejandro De Aza in the outfield. Manny Machado had one of those errors, as did J.J. Hardy, the gold glover at shortstop. Ray Navarro making the start here tonight. He was just called up from the minors. Chris Davis is at first, and Caleb Joseph will handle Miguel Gonzalez tonight. Jose Bautista. Buck Walter mix it up that defense. Diaz will get the start tonight in right field. He actually hit a leadoff home run against Aaron Sanchez. If you remember that the last time the Blue Jays were here, so he will get the start tonight. Travis Snyder is on the bench in favor of Diaz. Bautista base hit to right. Good piece of hitting by Bautista. He took that inside pitch and just drilled it to right. Good idea because you got the red hot in kind of show behind you. So Bautista has put two men aboard with a beautiful single to right. That's the four seamer right there, right over the middle of the plate. Instead of trying to overpower that ball, trying to hit it in the seats, Bautista just slices it in the right field for his first hit. Blue Jays threatening to get on the board early. Edwin Encarnacion had his 19th multi home run game last night. Home runs number six and seven for double E. High pop on the infield. Infield fly rule as Navarro makes the catch. Encarnacion is. Navarro, that ball was up there forever. He had to wait a long time for it to come down. The infield five rule was in effect, so Connishon was out. Two down for Russell Martin. Russell's been a hot hitter of late. He has six multi hit games over his last nine games played. This is his situation right here. Two outs. Let's see you score that run from second base. He's in scoring position. He has come through so far this year. Shortening up his swing. Choking up on the bat. He goes after the first pitch and pops it up almost in the same spot as in Carnacion. This time it's in foul ground. Martin retired on the foul. Pop Bridges strand a pair in their half of the first. In 17, they were held at two runs on five hits in last night's game. Let's take a look at their lineup tonight. Top of the order, Manny Machado, Alejandro Deaza, and then Jimmy Paredes. He's the DH. He's a switch hitter that's swinging a red hot bat. He has a personal high 11 game hit streak, 15 for 45. That's a 333 average. Paredes swings it hard from both sides of the plate, and then right behind him. In the cleanup spot, Adam Jones has it well once again against the Blue Jays. 429 so far this season with six extra base hits, and they're set to take on Aaron Sanchez for the third time this season. Aaron Sanchez is coming off his best outing of the season. Seven plus innings against Boston on Friday. He didn't allow a run on two hits, struck out 
three but still walk five batters and as you watch Aaron this season you can see the positive strides that he is making in his development despite the bases on balls Sanchez has not allowed more than three earned runs in a start this season Sanchez seems to be taking baby steps in the right direction over the last few starts this is Manny Machado and he takes one in there for a strike right at the bottom of the zone. Machado hitting 288. Ground ball sound like it might have broken his back. One out for Sanchez and out on the ground. Take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays behind there in Sanchez. It is Carrera, Pilar, and Chris Colavello from left to right in the outfield. Infield is going to be important tonight with Sanchez and the possibility of a lot of ground balls. Donaldson, Goins, Travis, and Encarnacion from third to first, and Russell Martin behind the plate for Aaron Sanchez. And you saw him already, Devin Travis, back in that starting lineup at second base, handling that second base position. He was saying today, feeling a lot more comfortable turning that double play. Now he's got to just stop thinking about it. Just go out there and just react when he's turning that double play. But he's looked good. Alejandro De Aza, as Pat mentioned, he had a leadoff home run last time Sanchez faced the Orioles here in Baltimore. That was Aaron's first start of the season on the 11th of April. It was a good piece of hitting. It was a fastball down and in. And he just dropped the barrel of that bat on the baseball. The Aza and Chris Davis homered in the first inning against Sanchez in his first start. There's a line drive into center that's going to drop in front of Colon. A one out base hit. As Diaz makes his way to first base, let's look at the scouting report for Aaron Sanchez. His pitch usage and his velocity. Let's take a look at the fastball. 73%. He's getting it up there, using the fastball a little bit more. Fox in at 94 miles an hour. The curveball's been outstanding, I think, in his last two starts. That's been the equalizer. He's using more changeups and a little bit more slider. So he's mixing up in this percentage, I think, there is really starting to get into the mix where he needs to be. It's always good to see a young pitcher lean heavily on his fastball, especially when you have the movement of Sanchez. This is Jimmy Paredes. We mentioned his 11 game hit streak. 15 for 45 during that stretch. This is his 21st game since coming off the disabled list. And those aren't fluke numbers right there. This guy can hit. He's a classic example of a late bloomer. He's 26 years old. And I think he's just coming into his own as a big little hitter. 13 of his 30 hits have been for extra bases. And he's not done flaring things around no. the ballpark. He's got five homers as you saw. And he's a good low ball hitter. That, that strike two right there, that second pitch, I think is a good place to pitch him up. Ground ball, Travis to his left, goes to second for one. No chance for a double play. Goins made a wise choice and just ate the ball at second, but now there are two houses that get the lead runner. You know, there is a tendency early in the game to try to finish off that double play, and then you might throw it away and end up with a runner in scoring position. But you see Jones coming up. You say, man, if I could just turn two, we could get out of this inning. Well, that was a smart play by Ryan Goins. A couple of youngsters in the middle of the diamond of the Blue Jays. And he wasn't going to turn that double play. It was just hit too slowly. This is Adam Jones. He goes after the first pitch and Sanchez beats him with that fastball. Up out over the plate. He was late on that fastball. Jones has turned into one of the best players in baseball. Easily. You know, when you talk about baseball players in the five categories, if you can hit, hit for power, run, throw, and play defense. He can do it all. Oh, and two Sanchez is steadily ahead early in this game.
Oh and two. Breaking ball pulled to third. Donaldson goes to Travis to end the inning. Good inning for Aaron Sanchez. He gives up a single and leaves the base running. We're scoreless after one. He came so close to making a terrific catch. He dove for the ball. The ball was actually in his glove. But as you see, as soon as he touches the ground, the ball squirts out. I talked to him about that yesterday, and the first thing he said is that was not a TV dive. He lost the ball last second in the lights and felt he had to extend just to make the catch. He said when he got back to the dugout, he was very, very disappointed about not being able to hold on to the ball. He spent a lot of time since he's been called up trying to feel comfortable in the outfield here with the Toronto Blue Jays. The hitting is one thing that's been easy for him so far, but the fielding is something he's really wanted to contribute. And he feels that if he had made that catch, it just would have given him that much more confidence moving forward. He tells me he's become very good friends with Sam Fold, and they talk outfield defense all the time. And he said Sam told him, make sure you get those first few steps right away. Get your jump. And that way you can look for the ball. You don't have to panic, as we saw Travis Snyder last night lose a ball. You find it, you get under it, you make the catch. And he's made some huge strides since he's come up here, guys, especially uh, his comfort in defense. Well, absolutely. And he's basically a first baseman. He played all over the diamond in college. He played a little shortstop, played some third, played in the outfield. He has played the most in right field when he's not playing first base. And that is hard to do. Go from the infield, especially a corner position, to the outfield. It feels like you've got to cover so much more territory. But he's done okay. Two and one to Colabello. He's certainly swinging the bat. Colabello, 14 for 26 since he has joined the Blue Jays, driven in five. Got underneath that high pitch. Colabello, Blue Jays really noticed him last April in a series in Minnesota. In the three game series, he went eight for 12, four doubles, and five RBIs. And that got the attention of the front office. Yep, so when his name appeared on the waiver wire, they quickly claimed him. This ball is popped in the air over toward the seats. Long run for. Navarro and Davis. And there are the long road for Chris Colabella. Seven seasons in the Can Am League. He calls it the Indy League, the Independent League, playing for the Worcester Tornadoes with Nashua Pride. He made his major league debut at the age of 29. And you mentioned that great April that he had last year in the series that he had against the Blue Jays really opened up the Blue Jay front office eyes. He set a franchise record with 27 RBIs in April. Breaking ball, he went around. Colabello strikes out. That's the second strike out of the game for Gonzalez. He 
couldn't check on that curveball. Gonzalez mostly fastball splitter. By well, that time he goes with his curveball and it fooled Colabello. Spins a good one. Look at the spin right over the top. The 12 to 6 curveball. And Colabello cannot hold up. Kevin Pilar went one for five in the game last night. Not a whole lot of at bats for Pilar. He's one for two against Gonzalez. He pops this ball up. J.J. Hardy, the shortstop, and blowing it around, he makes the catch. Two down here in the second. That is three pop-ups in the first inning and two-thirds by the Blue Jays. Tells you that that fastball is up in the strike zone, and they just haven't timed it up just yet. Well, that's a good and a bad sign because obviously they're popping it up, but they're also getting pitches up in the mm -hmm. zone that can fly out of this ballpark. And the ball was flying today in batting practice. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. That ball, both teams sent dozens of baseballs into the seats during BP today. Shortstop Ryan Goins had a three hit game last night. He was on base four of the five times he came with a play. Had a bunch single to start his night. He actually reached base three times leading off innings. Hard hit ball, but right to the second baseman. Easy inning for Gonzalez. Three up, three down in the second. His number so far Davis is four for four with two home runs against Aaron Sanchez and the simple reason why is that fastball comes back out over the plate to for Chris Davis you've got to pitch him in where he can't extend those arms he can power the ball out in left field he can power the ball out in right field I think what Aaron's going to have to do is he's going to have to pitch him in and he's going to have to pitch him up those two home runs that you saw were there were just fastballs mediocre fastballs over the middle of the plate. So he starts him out with a breaking ball from a different look. Chris Davis knows what his weakness is. He knows mm -hmm. he's got a hole on the inner part, and that's the home run he hit off of Estrada in game one of this series. He threw him a first pitch fastball in his weakness up and in, and he was looking for it and got the head out he and hit turned, a home run. He turned on it. Good job throwing a couple breaking balls. That's three and zero, oh, and Sanchez is fully aware that he's probably got the green light. Yeah, yeah he's going to try and hit the ball out of the ballpark here. That's a pretty good pitch, but Sanchez walks him on four pitches. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell.
Bryce Hopper and Matt Williams got thrown out of the game in the seventh inning of that ball game, and it was tied 5 5. But all is well that ends well. Sanchez misses with the first pitch to J.J. Harvey. Hardy playing just his seventh game of the season. He injured his shoulder in spring training. He wasn't throwing related. He had a collision with Jonathan Scope behind the bag. His second hit the ground hard. Sanchez has to regroup. He made some great pitches in the first inning, down in the zone. A lot of good fastballs for strikes. Yeah, he wasn't rushing himself at all in that first inning. He seemed very under control. Now it just looks like he's getting underneath the pitch just a little bit. Everything's in the same spot. Also, Mark says, "You know what? This ball's not working. <laughs> Give me another one." He has to constantly think about keeping his hand behind the baseball, staying on top of the ball, so he stays down. There's that 3 0 strike. He can pour that one in there pretty good. Sanchez gave up a single in the first to Alejandro de Aza, and he's walked Chris Davis here to start the second. Four back to back walks for Eurus. And Sanchez grew up in California, and that is Mike Shipley in the blue Blue Jays jacket. And he's a little anxious right now as Aaron has walked the first two batters in this inning. But Mike was a pitcher himself. He was a left handed pitcher in college, and he knows an awful lot about pitching, and he certainly gets a chance to watch his son pitch an awful lot. And that's all you can do is sit there and fold your arms. Don't you want to go out there? <laughs> it's a terrible feeling. Yeah. Isn't it? You and tough. I have both gotten through it. Watching your kids play baseball. David Lowe bunts it right out in front of home. Martin thought about third, then second, and takes the out at first. Russell came out, assessed the situation. He took a look at third, quick glance at second, but he took the sure out at first. Yeah, he was thinking about maybe getting one of those lead runners because the ball was hit right directly into the dirt and it spun away from him. Low gets on top of it and look, it spins away from it. Looked like he tripped over the bat just a little bit, also coming out from behind home plate, but it's a sacrifice bunt. Anytime the opposition gives up an out, you've got to get an out somewhere. You've got to take what they give you. Kenneth Joseph in the eighth spot. First pitch breaking ball for a strike. Did coaches ever teach you when you were sacrificing to lay the bat right down in front of the catcher to make you jump over it or run yeah. into it? Oh, yeah. That's what David Lowe did right there. Just set it right down in front of home plate. Make the catcher have to jump over it and deal with it. Another breaking ball line foul outside of three. Aaron Sanchez is three and two for the season. This is his seventh start. They haven't hit much off Sanchez coming into this game. Opponents batting average at 216. The walks have been a concern. Yeah, they've been concerned. His ERA still at 36 coming into this game. Breaking ball. That's a fair ball. JJ Hardy coming in to score as he follows Davis right behind Davis. It's a two run double for Caleb Joseph. One too many breaking balls. It stayed over the plate with two strikes, and Joseph hit it down the left yeah. field line. His fourth double. Good major league hitters. You can see Joseph choking up with two strikes. Comes through again. Runners in scoring position. This is his eighth hit. That was three straight curveballs that he threw to him. And if you're going to do that, throw it for the third time. Throw it in the dirt. Maybe you get him fishing for it because you needed a strikeout. Joseph picks up the runners, the two runners, the leadoff walks, come back to score. So the leadoff walks and then the sacrifice bunt. David Joseph knocks in a pair, his 11th and 12th RBI. This is Ray Navarro. Bouncing ball to Hopper to the second baseman Travis Navarro's retired. Joseph goes to third on the out.
The Blue Jays trailed in the game last night two to nothing, and they stormed back. They scored four in the seventh and four in the eighth, and won ten to two. Manny Machado grounded out to second base on his first at bat. Russell did a good job. He saved a run right there. That pitch was down and away. You know, we talk about Sanchez and his fastball that sinks. This one cuts. Look at that. Russell Martin does a great job of somehow catching that ball. Breaking ball. Stuff wise, Aaron Sanchez has some of the best stuff on the Blue Jays staff. As soon as he learns to harness that and pitch with it, he's going to be outstanding. This is just his seventh big league start. There's a curveball in there. You know, he threw good fastballs in the first inning, a lot of the single to Diaz, and then he missed badly with his fastballs in the second and walked back to back batters to lead things off. And then Martin, in an attempt to get that release point in the strike zone, called some breaking balls and worked his way back. But his fastball was still his best pitch. And it looks like he's going to throw one right here. He does, and it's drilled to the alley at left center. Off the wall. Joseph comes in to score. Machado is headed for second. He'll get there standing up. A three run inning for Baltimore. Nothing with throwing a 3 1 fastball when you can throw it as hard as Aaron Sanchez does and get the movement, but you've got to get it down, and this time it leaps back up over the middle strike. Strike zone belt high, and Manny Machado is hot. That's why Buck Showalter has him in that leadoff spot. Drills that ball off the wall. That was a line drive. Off the wall, left center. Machado homered, leading off the game on Friday night. He had a pair of doubles in a three-hit game last night, and here he has an RBI double with two outs in the second inning. One of the best hitters in baseball, and he is healthy. He's been dealing with injuries the last couple of years. Machado has now reached base safely in 19 straight games. Deaza after the visit to the mound by Pete Walker. Deaza single to center his first time. He's late on that fastball at 94. Another foul down the left side. You mentioned Sanchez in his last start was terrific. He was the first Toronto starter not to allow a run, pitching more than three innings. He went seven innings and pitched into the eighth and held the Red Sox to just two hits. Breaking ball in the dirt and they have to check his swing. I thought it's two and two. I thought his curveball in his last game was his best that we have seen this year. It looked like he could throw it at will and he put it in a good spot. There are the the numbers from that last start. 67% ground balls. This is a base hit. That's going to go all the way to the wall. The Chato's around third. He's going to score. Deaza is two for two already tonight. And the Orioles have put up four runs here in the second. You know, we talked about Deaza in the lineup tonight because of his past success against Aaron Sanchez and it keeps rolling. Look, Showalter saw that he had a home run against him the last time the Blue Jays were here, puts him in the lineup, singles his first time up, and then pulls his hands in on this inside fastball. 
and rips it down into the corner for an RBI double. These two teams have potent lineups. Last night was the exception as the Orioles scored two runs on five hits, but both of these lineups capable of exploding anywhere. And be careful with Paredes early in the count. He loves to swing early, hitting over 400 on the first pitch of an at bat. Gets away from Martin and Beaza moves to third. It's a wild pitch charge to Sanchez. You know, you and I have watched a lot of young pitchers over the years come up to the big leagues as you watch this two seamer go straight down in the dirt. And the young pitchers come up here, and when they get into these types of innings, they don't know how to get out of it. It just goes too fast. You want to minimize the damage as best you can. And young pitchers just don't have that that confidence or that know how how to get out of these types of innings. They haven't pitched in these situations mm -hmm. enough. Most organizations and it's not just the Blue Jays but it's around baseball. They just limit the innings. Goins backhand throws on the run. In time another run comes across. Paredes with another base hit drives home Deaza. They're checking on the replay. They has a score from third after advancing on the wild pitch. It's an infield hit for Paredes. And they're going to have to stall just a little bit. Russell Martin's going to go out and talk to his pitcher here as the Blue Jays get a chance to take a look at this one more time. Goins doesn't have time to plant that foot, but throws accurately across the diamond. It was close. Boy, that is close. This one might be able to tell you definitively. Yeah, he was safe. Jeff Francis loosening up as Jones will be the ninth Oriole to bat in the second. Cuts on the first pitch. All started with back to back walks. Davis and Hardy got a sacrifice bunt. Once again, you play in the American League East, you play for one, you're liable to get four. Mm -hmm. The fly ball, that should end the inning. Pilar comes in, he makes the catch. The inning is over, but the Orioles score five runs in the second to take a commanding five nothing lead early. Presented by the 2015 Honda CRV, Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year.
That is Utah Street in front of the B&O warehouse beyond the fence in right. Lots of fans filing in here. Night in Baltimore. Oriel Park in Camden Yard, one of the best ballparks in all of baseball. Certainly is. This was one of the first retro, right? And they haven't been able to duplicate it anywhere, but it's still gorgeous. Yeah, they did a nice job of keeping their warehouse intact. The Orioles front office is inside that warehouse, and they've got restaurants and they've got some bars over there, and it's a pretty good location. Look out. And he's calling the foul ball. Hallian's calling a foul ball, and he's going to call it out of that. He's still hollering at Carrera. He said that's a foul ball. Buck Showalter was out on the grass, the manager for the Orioles. And wait a minute, that was a foul ball. Now John Gibbons is perched up on the top step of the Blue Jays dugout, and he's waiting for the replay. Yeah, he wants an explanation right here from the crew chief, Tom Hallian. Tom Hallian was very clear. He calls it immediately. Watch this pitch inside. It hit him, never hit the bat, so they're going to look at it and review. And it sounded like it had bat involved, but it never touched yeah. the bat. And Carrera right away said it hit me in the shoulder, started the first base, and the home plate umpire, you know, they'll hear, they'll, they'll listen to that sound like it hit the bat, but there's no question. Number one, he did not offer at it. Yeah. Pulled the bat back. Number two, it clearly hit him in the shoulder, so he's got to be awarded first base. Yeah, and they, the bat wasn't even close to baseball when it hit him in the shoulder, so I think they're going to overturn this challenge here. But there was a distinct sound. It sounded like bat or something hard. But watch how it gets the bat out of the way and it hits him on that shoulder. That's the sound he heard that you saw right there. His bat hitting his helmet. You, you definitely heard a sound like it hit the bat and then hit the player. But the umpires get it right now. Buck Showalter wants an explanation. Watch the bat after the ball hits him in the shoulder. It comes up, hits him right in the helmet. That's what the sound was. And now Showalter's got Dr. Tom Hagen. I mean, this is a reviewable play. There's no argument about that. Batter hit by a pitch is a common reviewable play. The Buck Showalter wants to make sure he understands what Hallian heard. Tom Hallian is the crew chief. There's really nothing in question, I wouldn't think, but Buck Showalter has a different opinion of that for sure. So Carrera will be at first base. The leadoff man. Well, he definitely has something on his mind he, that he wants to have explained by Tom Hallian. I don't know if he thought that maybe he bunted at the ball or something, but he clearly didn't on that replay. I want to remind you there's great hockey action on right now on CBC. It's game seven, Caps and Rangers at Madison Square Garden. One of the best venues in sports. So everybody seems satisfied now. Carrera's at first, Joe Walters in the dugout. Kevin Travis will step in the batter's box. Blue Jays got a uphill battle. They're down by five. And that pitch looked like it was a couple inches off the plate inside. There's a base hit to right field. Carrera is going to turn around second. He'll go to third. Here's the throw. It's a terrible throw. And that enables Travis to move into second base. Deaza had no shot at all. And he lets that trail runner get yeah. the scoring position. Yeah, that's not what the Baltimore Orioles are all about. They're one of the finest 
fundamentally sound baseball teams that we have seen over the years. That's just a bad baseball play right there. Well, there especially no, when you're up by five. Five, keep the double play in order. Diaz, not known to have a great arm, air mails that one all the way to the third baseman, and they were not going to get Carrera at third base. And Devin Travis says, thank you very much. Buck Showalter says, what's going on out there? Another note in his book. Josh Donaldson has to capitalize here. Boy, that's a big mistake. Put two runners in scoring position in the third inning. You hit a batter, give up a base hit, and then make a bad throw. And now you got to deal with Donaldson, Bautista, Incarnacion. Blue Jays can get right back in this game here. Ball and a strike. One thing we have seen from Donaldson early on is that he goes to the plate with a plan. I'm never really sure what that plan is, but he never takes too many real wild swings. Well, and, and you can see from those runners in scoring position this season, that's great. No, nine for 23 with 14 of those runs driven in. His plan is to hit the ball hard somewhere. You take a look at. What Donaldson has done since 2013, he leads all third basemen in RBIs, and it's a wide margin. Kyle Seeger, Evan Longoria, Sandoval, and Beltre. Top five in baseball. And the best plan is to think about the big part of the ballpark right here. Second and third, nobody out. When you think about the big part of the ballpark, you react then to breaking balls. Donaldson's got something in his eye. As Italian for a little time. I wonder if that happened while the pitch was on the way. Because that was a fastball right in his wheelhouse and he took it. It immediately called timeout. Two balls and two strikes, nobody out. Bouncing ball and Carrera now dives back and gets tagged at third. Oh, Pereira, he got hung up. The ball was bounced to the third baseman. He got in between. He took a step toward home, and Machado heads up, dove to put the tag on him at third. You know, I still think Machado was going to concede the run that he was going to go to first base, but then when Pereira didn't get back, watch it one more time. He breaks, then he goes back, and Machado says, okay, no problem. Then he breaks again, and that's when Machado says, well, I'm going to try and get you out. And he did. So a base running mistake on the Blue Jays side right there. You got to make that ball go through when you're down by five runs. Nowhere to go. Well, especially where you are in the batting order. You got Donaldson who bounced out, and you can see the ground ball because you're still going to have Bautista in in Palacio. So they're going to check it here. And for the second time this inning, the umpires are going to go to the review. But once again, that's the case of knowing where you are in the lineup. Yes. You're down by five. You already got a break. You got a hit batter. They also made a bad throw to move two runners into scoring position, and then Ferrer got over anxious at third and gets tagged out. But you're Donaldson, Bautista, and Connachon. This is where you can make up ground in a hurry. Boy, that's a tough angle for us to tell. Ferrer yeah. had his. Right hand on the base and Machado tagged him low on the leg. Tagged him low, tagged him late. Uh, the question is, did he have his hand in there? And I just, I don't know if there is a camera angle that'll tell you that. Well, that's as good an angle as we have seen, and it appears to be Machado tagging him before the hand gets back. And indeed, the umpires have just got confirmation of that. So the play will stand on the field. It's a fielder's choice for Donaldson. Pereira is out five unassisted at third. And now the Orioles have a double play situation with Travis at second, Donaldson at first, and Bautista at the plate. Bautista single to right his first time up. He had a 
good hack at that first pitch. He will give you a fastball. That's what Bautista gets, and he fouls it straight back. Batters are only hitting 189 off of Miguel Gonzalez's fastball this season. He is in the top five for the stingiest against that fastball. Now, Travis did a good job of dividing the attention of the pitcher Gonzalez. He took an extra little shuffle off second base. Gonzalez caught him in his eye and then threw one bat down and away to Bautista. Just a little bit of a distraction. I don't even know why he's even thinking about that runner with the home run hitter at the plate. Shouldn't even worry about Shouldn't it. Shouldn't even be thinking about it. Back to back trouble for the Orioles with Bautista and Encarnacion. Jose hit three balls last night to the warning track and left. He had a double and then two that were caught. And he just missed a three homer night. Ground ball, Machado at third, throws a strike to second, but Hall took his time and throws the first to complete the five, four, three double play. A promising inning, and the Blue Jays end up with nothing. Now by Arden Zelling, who talks about Aaron Sanchez coming off his best start of the year last time out and trying to keep things simple and working on the mental part of the game. It's a great story, a great read. And guys, I talked to Aaron about this yesterday, and he said the last time he started, he had a visit from Russell Martin, and Russell just told him to take a breath, slow down. It seems that he gets a little bit overwhelmed, the adrenaline pumps up, and the game just gets too fast for him. And Russell got a chance to calm him down, and that really made a difference. And it looks as though he's kind of getting ahead of himself again tonight, doesn't it? Well, it sure does, Barry. He had pretty good first inning, and then things kind of unraveled in the second. Nine Orioles faced Sanchez in the second. They scored five runs on four hits, and Chris Davis drills this to left. Carrera had it in his glove and dropped it. He got turned around. When he turned around, he reached out, got the ball in his glove, but then dropped it. That ball. Davis is on for a second time. That ball is going to be slicing towards the line off of a left-hander hitter's bat, and you can see he thought it was to his left. He's got a 360 around and then reach out, and it hits right in the palm of the glove and pops out. Still had a chance to make it, but you can see where it hit. And rolled out of his glove. 
I don't think he saw it right when he turned around. I think that's why there was a hesitation. He looked a little tentative as he reached for it. That is a hard play for an outfielder to turn, take your eye off the ball like that, and turn and try and pick it back up, especially in twilight where we are right now. It's a double for Davis, his sixth of the season. It leads off the third for Baltimore. J.J. Hardy walked and scored in the second. Breaking ball way outside. You know, this is the lot of a young pitcher coming off his best start of his young career, and now he's already had a nine batter inning. Walked a couple, gave him the five spot in the second, and falling behind Hardy here with a man in second. And there are the inconsistencies a little bit for young pitchers. I mean, you've seen young pitchers over the years. You see them come up with great stuff, and it takes a while before they figure it out. I think the biggest thing is the effort level. You have to find out what the perfect effort level is. This has popped out. We have the best example of effort level I've ever seen in Mark Burley. I mean, he stays the same no matter how it's going. His effort and Release everything is under control every time. He's been doing it for 16 years <laughs> at the big league level. There's a fly ball to left Carrera with a run, and he'll get there and make the catch. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Jamie, it's very difficult to hold down the Cy Young Award winner all season long, but what an outing so far for Kluber. Hasn't walked a batter, punched out 13. And Kluber has thrown 81 pitches through six innings. That's wow. dealing. And that's against the 23 and 9 Cardinals. Cardinals, they have the best record in baseball, and they're off to another great start. Not so tonight. David Lowe had that sacrifice bunt in the second. Those two pitches up and away well off the strike zone and that just gets to be where you have to feel where that release point is and yep. you have to control your hand and really understand how you need to release that baseball. It's a, it's a timing thing for him right there. And you got that timing working for you. Everything is released out front. There's a looping ball into center and Pilar dives and makes another. Saving catch. He takes a hit away from David Lowe. That's almost becoming routine now for Kevin Pillar in the outfield. We get surprised when he doesn't make the catch. He makes a great jump on this ball and tracks it. Recognizes that that ball is right off the end of the bat. Takes a good route to it. Leaves his feet once again and makes just another great catch. Well, you're right. We do expect it, and so does. Kevin he takes a lot of pride in his defense but that's the toughest play for an outfielder that big swing and a ball hit off the end of the bat. Caleb Joseph a two run double his first time up. Joseph got a two strike breaking ball and hit it just inside the left field foul line. Ground ball. Donaldson at third takes his time. The inning is over. Lead off double and he's left on base by Sanchez. Blue Jays are down by five. Edwin Encarnacion starting to heat up big time. A two home run game last night. He'll start things off when we come back.
Days on Sports. Presented by the 2015 Honda CRV, Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year. Good shot of the warehouse beyond the fence in right field, then in between that building and the ballpark is Utah Street. They always chronicle the home runs that land on Utah Street. That's where the big boys go. Well, if you took a bucket out there during batting practice, you would have had like two dozen <laughs> baseballs because a lot of them ended up on Utah Street during batting practice this afternoon. Edwin Encarnacion, he had two home runs to right in the game last night. Gonzalez jumps ahead with that first pitch curveball. Edwin has just three hits against Gonzalez in 23 at bats, but all three hits have been home runs. But Gonzalez has mixed it up very well against Encarnacion. He's trying to come inside again. In the month of April, looking at the stats, and they can break down everything you want. In the month of April, pitchers that were up and into Encarnacion, he hit 120. Month of May, the calendar flips over to May. Same pitches in that area, he's hitting 400 so far. So that just suggests that it, it, it's what he says, I'm just missing my pitches in April. There's one right there. May flips over, the timing's just a little bit better, warms up just a little bit better. You feel a little bit more loose, a little bit stronger, and now you start hitting them. Well, in both springs, last year and this year, he didn't have a lot of bats. He had mm -hmm. injuries both times, and that limited his opportunities to get at bats. Foul back. Take a look at the hot zone for Encarnacion, kind of diagonal strength. He handles that pitch up and in and hammers the middle middle pitch and can really do some damage down and away like he did last night. And they stayed away up and away. Last night it was down and he could reach it. Edwin hit 205 in the month of April with four homers and 10 RBIs. You know it's all about timing at the plate and getting into a rhythm baseball you play every day and you start to feel good and you're going to have the ebbs and flows of the season right now it looks like Edwin is in that good stretch there's another drive to right Daz is on the warning track and he'll run it down he stayed with it once he got back to the wall he ran parallel to that big high wall and was able to make the running catch that was the whole key that he got to the wall got back to the wall and then you can react to where the ball is watch him now he's running parallel with that wall and the wind is going to blow it towards the foul line and Diaz runs it down keep your eye on the ball it's slicing away from you and with the backhand he Finds the glove. Diaz has played more in left field this year than he has in right field, but he stayed with that ball that was slicing away from him. Well, so Martin takes a ball in the dirt. Blue Jays didn't get it going offensively until the seventh last night. They scored a pair of single runs in the fourth and sixth, and then they jumped out with a four spot in the seventh and four more in the eighth. So don't be discouraged, folks. Play by Navarro. Timed his leap perfectly. He's making his fifth start at second. And he takes a hit away from Russell Martin. Boy, that looked like it had base hit written on it all the way. Line drive to right field. But Navarro, all five, ten of them, gets up and pulls it in, robbing Russell Martin of a base hit. This is Chris Colabella. He struck out on a curveball his first at bat. He gets jammed. It's a little roller to short. J.J. Hardy in time. Quick inning for Gonzalez. A couple of good defensive plays behind him. Three up, three down. Go the Jays in the fourth.
Country Day presented by TD. The Blue Jays host the Mariners that afternoon at 107, and the first 20,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays trucker hat. Special appearances by Chad Brownlee and Gord Bamford. No guarantees you'll see R.A. Dickey and Jose Bautista in Cowboy gear, but it will be a good game and a good time. Go to BlueJays.com for tickets. Will you wear a Cowboy hat that day, Buck? I will. I will. Look oh, forward to that. I've always worn Cowboy hats. Not a hat like that, but maybe we can come up with something. <laughs> Aaron Sanchez will work to the number nine hitter, Ray Navarro, the second baseman. He goes after the first pitch and flies towards center field. There's Poar, one down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tampa Bay 18 and 16 the Yankees 21 and 13 at the start of that one out back to the top of the order Manny Machado and he drove in a run with a double to the alley in left center hard to realize Machado still just 22 years old. He's dealt with knee injuries the last couple of seasons, but boy, he looks good now. And he has been a terrific player early in his career. How many? Boy, there's another good 22 year old, have we said already yeah. this year? They're, they're everywhere. Yeah, there are a lot of good young players in the game now. It's good for baseball. It'll be certainly focal point for the younger fans. I think Bryce Harper is finally 22. Is is Mike Trout 22? <laughs> I think Mike Trout's maybe just 23. We saw Noah Syndergaard 22. Sanchez will turn 23 on Canada Day. It's going to slice out of play. That's good for baseball, as I said. I think it'll create a lot of younger fans, and they come out and they can relate to these guys. They're just a few years older mm -hmm. than some of the younger fans we have. Used to be seniors in college. Here they are in the big leagues doing some pretty special things. Ground ball in the hole. Goins backhands and throws in time. Nice play by Ryan Goins. He really took his time. He knew he had a little time with Machado running, but he was patient and made a good, accurate throw. Accurate throw on the run. That's a tough in between hop that he catches. On the backhand, and then going away from first base, throws on the run, gets it over there on a fly, and gets the runner at first base. Pretty good play. He had a tough air in last night's game. Got his spikes yeah. caught in the dirt, threw him off balance, and he stumbled a bit, and then he got his glove on him. He couldn't make a play, but it was going to be a routine ground ball. At 100 days is two for two. He had an RBI double in the second. He singled to center in the first. He is four for eight against Sanchez. That breaking ball hit him right on the back foot. And that is the epitome of a back foot breaking ball yeah. hit him right on top of the toe that's where you would like to throw it when you've got two strikes you sweep it right underneath the baseball bat At that time he threw a little bit too hard and right off the toe couldn't get that front foot out of the way so they ask us aboard for a third time Jim Paredes Batting third tonight. Boy, the book on him is first ball fastball hitter. He goes up there hacking. So throw him a fastball. That's okay. Don't throw it for a strike. Yeah. Just make it inviting enough yeah. that he'll swing it. And you can keep it off the barrel of the bat. He'll swing it. If you're comfortable throwing the breaking ball, go ahead and do that.
two and one. From start to start for younger pitchers, it's really kind of a prep shoot. You don't know what you're going to get, and you just roll the dice and see whatever comes up. But he's got the stuff. It's just a matter of harnessing it in the strength zone. And when he does that, watch out. You know, history is littered with guys that came up with great stuff, and it took them two years, sometimes three years, before they were able to pitch with that great stuff. And, and, and I mean, throwing breaking balls when you're behind in the count, spotting your fastball. And goes Diaz, a little tapper back to the mound, and Sanchez reached for it and made an error. He got ahead of himself, anxious to get out of the inning. And for Aaron, that'll be his second air of the season. And it was a comebacker to his credit. Paredes never hesitated out of the box, and it cost Sanchez an air. One hopper right there. That's all it took. Just miss it just a little bit. And you're right, it just went a little bit too quick. Get the glove down, look it into the glove. You can see his momentum was already going over to first base before he even had the glove. Now he's got a pitch to Adam Jones. He could be over sitting on the bench, and now he's got to face one of the best hitters in the American League. Branch is up for a second time. He should be ready. Diaza at second. Paredes at first. Jones 0 for 2 so far. Pick off to second and it's low and Diaz is back. You can't blame Russell Martin trying to get out of this inning without throwing another pitch to Jones. Yeah, help out his young pitcher. You see Diaz is shaking his head now. Not going to get me. Anything to get out of this inning. But what he has done with that throw, Martin has certainly taken away the aggressiveness of Diaz with two outs. He's got to shorten up a little bit. Travis will go to second to end the inning. So the air by Sanchez doesn't factor in. We'll move to the fifth. The Orioles have a five nothing lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jay Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zorn. Regular season game live or on demand at True HD. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and much more. You will also get a free At Bat 15 subscription. Watch baseball at home or at the office and on the go. You can get a season long subscription package as well. Go to bluejays.com for more details and having a look at that app tonight. A lot of attention, of course, on the Kluber no hit bid, but the Tampa Bay Rays and New York Yankees going at it again with the Rays falling behind early but taking the lead. Good job, Barry, and the Kluber no hit bid is over. They have gotten a hit, Cardinals. Johnny Peralta 
got the base hit, but Cooper now has 16 strikeouts. <laughs> Seven innings. Let's see. Seven times three is 21. So out of 21 outs, 16 punch outs. Yeah, he's thrown 101 pitches, and this is the Corey Cooper everybody expected to see at the start of the season, but it's taken him a few starts to get things going. I'll tell you what they miss in Cleveland. Young Gomes. Catch you. Mm. Kevin Pilar behind 0 and 2, and he strikes out with a foul tip. And Tom Hallion said, no foul tip. Pilar is saying, I fouled that ball. And he's standing home plate. Now John Gibbons will come out to support Pilar. And Hallion's out of it. No, I didn't have a foul tip at all. And then Gibbons said, can you ask somebody? Umpire's been in a lot of conversations. Yeah, like, yeah, they've been very busy. It doesn't look like uh, he's going to get some help. Gibby looked like he, Gibby looked like he is asking him for a little help. But he said, "I saw it all the way," and he might be right. Certainly didn't look like a foul tip. Well, I was just trying to talk his way into another pinch, but it's not going to work. That's the third strikeout for Gonzalez. First out in the fifth. He's going to that curveball with two strikes. He usually goes fastball or splitter. He's been using the curveball with two strikes to pick up those three strikeouts. Well, you mentioned it. He had a rough outing his last time out, so he's switched things up a bit. First pitch changeup for a strike. Last time out, Gonzalez was charged with five earned runs on five hits in just four innings. And that snapped his three game winning streak. That was against the Yankees in New York. Gonzalez is. An interesting study in perseverance as well. He was signed as a free agent by the Angels, a non drafted player. And then he was taken in Rule 5 draft by the Red Sox. This is popped up on the infield. Second baseman Navarro right there makes the catch. But you see, Gonzalez, we talk about. A quality pitcher. His last nine starts against the Blue Jays. He's been very dominant. Real good. A whip under one. A batting average under 200. He made his major league debut against the Toronto Blue Jays just about three years ago. May 29, 2012, and he struck out the first batter he faced, J.P. Aaron Sebia. Two outs. This is Ezekiel Carrera, who got hit by a pitch his last time. You know what he does, Gonzalez, is he throws strikes. He works quickly. He's got three pitches that he can throw for strikes at any time. Exactly the type of pitcher that Buck Showalter loves. Well, and two, here's another guy. We mentioned Burley in reference to effort level. This guy repeats his delivery pitch after pitch, and it's less than maximum effort. It's just a nice, easy delivery. Yeah, you, you never know if he's ahead in the count, behind in the count, winning the game, losing the game. I think you could say that about all of the starters that the Baltimore Orioles possess that they throw out there. It's a team that had the second best earned run average after the All Star break last year, and it's basically the same cast of characters starting for him this year. Another pop up. Ray Navarro, the second baseman, takes charge. He caught two pop ups in the inning, and Gonzalez is once again throwing very well against the Blue Jays early on.
Steven Gerrard plays his final home match as the Reds host Crystal Palace. Liverpool's home ground and field will be electric. An honor guard for Gerrard is planned, and tickets are a hot, hot item. Don't miss the match Saturday, 12 noon Eastern on Sportsnet. Buck. Thank you very much, Barry. Not a great soccer action going on right now. And late getting the opportunity to watch that game. We move to the bottom of the fifth. Sanchez still in the ball game. He's given up five runs on six hits, and all five runs came in the second inning. Chris Davis has reached base twice. He walked and scored in that second inning and doubled to lead off the third. It's this one off the end of the bat. Bowens near second base and. Davis is retired one down. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. The Inner Harbor of Baltimore. A beautiful evening here. JJ Hardy. He walked. It was back to back walks that got everything started for the Orioles. Those are the second. Those are the only two walks yeah. that Aaron has tonight. He doesn't have a strikeout either. So no strikeouts, low walk total. So from where we are, five to nothing, his pitch count is still pretty good. That if he has a quick inning here, they might be able to get another inning out of him. Oh, that's good pitch. There's a strikeout finally the first one of the night for Sanchez as J.J. Hardy takes strike three. A little bit quicker tempo this inning for Aaron Sanchez get it. And throw it that time right on the corner. That's where you want to throw that two strike pitch. Oh what a wicked hop and that came up and. Ain't up in Carnacion. Boy, that's the old fashioned too hot to handle. That wow. took a nasty hop and came up and hit Edmund. Appeared to hit him in the chest. He didn't have much of a chance on that thing. One hop bullet off the bat of low, and it looks like he got his fingers out of the way just in time. We've seen a lot of infielders. You can see Edwin looking at his hand, get those fingers in the way and get. Get him broken. It is a base hit for low. Catcher Caleb Joseph. Seven hits now for the Orioles. Blue Jays bullpen is quiet at the moment. Russ has put on a clinic blocking yeah. those balls in the dirt. Tough to catch these types of pitchers that throw hard with a lot of movement and at times you're just not sure where the ball's going to go. He's had to backhand a couple of balls. He's had to go down and block them in front of him. One and two. Five nothing Baltimore. They scored all their runs in the second. Blue Jays have just two hits. Devin Travis and Jose Bautista. A couple of singles to right. That's been it. Bouncing ball, Goins flips to Travis. That ends the inning. So Aaron Sanchez puts up another zero. Now he look for some help from his hitters. Travis Donaldson Bautista against Gonzalez when we come back.
from Mike Trout, Nelson Cruz, and oh yes, Melky Cabrera. It all begins May 18th through the 21st when the Angels come to town, followed by the Mariners the 22nd to the 24th, and the White Sox come in right after that May 25th through 27th. Some great baseball in May at Rogers Center. Go to BlueJays.com for more. Bye. Thank you very much, Barry, and it should be interesting to get a chance to see King Felix, James Paxson, Taiwan Walker for the Mariners. Top of the order for the Blue Jays. Devin Travis has one of the two Blue Jay hits. He gets sawed off, and that's near the bag at second. J.J. Harden will throw him out. Boy, another good pitch from Gonzalez got way in on the hands of Travis. That's the thing about Gonzalez, his delivery, short arms, it, and he can get that ball in there. Devin Travis is eaten up by that fastball in the inner half. It's just coming straight in on his hands. He just can't get the barrel out there quick enough. And Miguel Gonzalez has another out. Last time he had a base runner was Devin Travis in the third inning. That went in kind of show appears to be okay. Got that hot shot off bare hand, and he said he was all right once he got back into the dugout. Josh Donaldson has been on base twice. He walked in, reached on the field his choice. This is a ground ball to third. Two ground ball outs here in the sixth. Save during the Lawn and Garden Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Jose Bautista bats with two outs and nobody on. Bautista has the other Blue Jay hit. That was a ball to right field and he's got that if he wants it again. They've got three infielders on the left side of the infield. Chris Davis manning the whole side on the right side of the infield if Bautista wants to take a shot over there. Slow breaking ball. We mentioned Corey Kluber. He now has 17 strikeouts. Check that he's got 18 now. That's the most in the major leagues this season. Two more than Michael Pineda. Had against this Oriole ball player. Eight complete innings, no earned runs, no walks, 18 strikeouts. He's only thrown 113 pitches. Well, he has thrown a lot of strikes. He's filling up that strike zone tonight. 20 is the record? Yep. Up the knees on the corner. It's two and two to Bautista. It's going to reach the seats out of play. You mentioned the strikeouts. The interesting thing. There's a lot of good players in that lineup. Matt Holiday, he must have gotten hurt. He came out of the game. He didn't have an official at bat. Pete Cosmo went in the game early. But everybody in that lineup has struck out. And they're playing in Cleveland, so they don't have the pitcher hitter. Oh, that's right. The DH. Bautista strikes out. That's four strikeouts for Gonzalez. He has been sharp through five innings. Shutting out the Blue Jays on just two hits.
authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. That looks pretty good about now. A little mustard and ketchup on a hot dog. That never works. A little squiggly mark on that. You gotta put mustard on the hot dog. I think he uh, spelled Orioles. That's what he was writing like. something, wasn't he? Yeah, it looked like it. he wrote Orioles on there and ketchup. It's gotta be mustard. Mustard all the way. Yeah. Aaron Sanchez working in the sixth. This is a high fly ball to left. Carrera over toward the line makes the catch. Navarro's retired one down. Well, Sanchez obviously would like to take that one inning out of the equation tonight. Five runs on four hits in the second. It all started with back to back walks. And they would come around to score. They had three doubles in that inning, Baltimore Orioles. All started leaking up on them just a little bit. But since that inning, he this has allowed two hits. Popped up and playable for Encarnacion. He's in foul territory. And the channel's retired. The channel is one for four. Since that inning, but that second inning, Aaron Sanchez has given up a double to Davis on a ball that could have been caught. By Ezekiel Pereira in left field. They got turned around. Then he gave up that infield single off the chest of Edwin Encarnacion. So he's really straightened things out. Niaza, he hit that RBI double in the second. He got hit by a pitch in the fourth. He also singled in the first. He's had a perfect night. Well, you're right, and this is going to be overall a decent outing for Sanchez simply because he has ironed some things out. He's made quality pitches, and you know, you could say, well, of course, it's 5 nothing now, but at the same time, I mean, he's learning a little bit more about yeah. himself as a starter. He still had to pitch. He has left the base runner on every inning, trying to get that first one, two, three inning of the night. Mm -hmm. Pete Walker, the pitching coach, has seen a lot of strides in the right direction from Sanchez. Change of this is bouncing dirt. It's three and one. Jimmy Paredes is on deck. There's another walk that is three walks now in the first since the second inning. Blue Jays will have a four game series against Houston and that's why Gibbons and Walker are just trying to conserve as many pitches as they can down in that bullpen. Drew Hutchison has already left Baltimore. He is headed to Houston to get ready for his start tomorrow night. Boy I agree with that. Stretch him out here. That's why Aaron's got to get this guy right here. You know he doesn't want to have to go to his bullpen just to finish off one inning. I'd like to see Aaron Sanchez finish off this hitter right here, walk off the field, being his last inning, and with a little confidence, something to build on in his next start. Getting under it again. Liam Hendricks loosening up for the Blue Jays, and you're right, you'd like to be able to get out of this inning and give 
the next pitcher a clean inning to start with. They can give Aaron Sanchez a little confidence too. That was his 98th pitch. And everything has been up and away. Getting under the baseball. Four in the same spot. Back to back walks with two outs here in the six. And John Gibbons is going to have to make a change. So Sanchez back to back walks for a second time tonight. And he will leave this ball game just shy of 100 pitches. And it was the second inning where the wheels fell off for Sanchez. He gave up the five runs on four hits. It all started with a couple of walks, and now he'll turn to the bullpen to Liam Hendricks to get him out of this sixth inning. Four to nine, and he leads the American League and walks aloud. Twenty-nine for the season after four more tonight. Pat. Had it figured out there, a couple of walks in the second inning, then very good up until the two outs here in the sixth inning, and then just lost that release point once again. That'll give him twenty-nine walks for tonight. He's out of the game, and Liam Hendricks is into the game to try and finish off this sixth inning. It's the first time that we have seen Liam in this series. Because four days ago, through three innings against the Boston Red Sox, had a no decision in that game at three strikeouts, pitched very well out of the bullpen. He inherits a tight situation here with two aboard and Adam Jones, the batter. Jones had his hit streak snapped last night. He had hit in all 11 of the previous home games. He took an 0 for last night. So far tonight, he's 0 for 3. Two outs. Deaza at second, Paredes at first, and Jones the batter. There's a first pitch strike from Hendricks. The bullpen has been terrific lately. And it is on the heels of the starters being a little more consistent. Bullpen well rested, and they have sorted out their roles very effectively. Very effectively. Hendricks is a seventh inning guy. We're going to get out multiple innings as he hits Adam Jones. And that'll load the bases. Two outs, nobody on. And the Orioles haven't hit the ball yet, and they've got the bases loaded. And big slugger coming up. Chris Davis will come to the plate with two outs and the bases loaded. And Davis. Has hit well. He has a 317 average. As you look at this running fastball, it hits Jones on the five. We see Martin asking if Jones is okay, and 
No tension there whatsoever. This is Chris Davis. He's got four career grand slams, and he took the home run cut on that first pitch. Yeah, you got to throw him a breaking ball on the first pitch. He was sitting all over that first pitch fastball. Field, center field, right field. You got to be careful with them. Breaking ball in the dirt. <laughs> we have talked about the bullpen and how well they have pitched. And Hendricks has done a terrific job inheriting base runners. He's stranded all six so far. He also did a good job of striking batters out. Got a little bit more to his fastball since he's been pitching out of the bullpen. Two and two. Coming from being a starter to a reliever, Hendricks now has the luxury of knowing his outings are going to be shorter. So he can come at you with a good fastball. To center, but it's going to stay in the yard. Pilar makes the catch. Hendricks does a nice job. After loading the bases, he gets Davis to fly out. Canada and Little League Canada. 2015 stops this year include Abbotsford, BC, Okotoks, Alberta, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Victoria, BC, and Toronto, Ontario. Go to bluejays.com slash baseball academy for more details. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Like a great way for young kids to get some real good lessons from some pros. It sure is, Barry. They've been very popular and they've done a great job and they have started up Dwayne Ward heads them up and they get a lot of great instructors to show up for those instructor clinics make sure you check out where they're going to be there's a long drive but that's a foul off the bat of Encarnacion Edwin has gone over to New Jays really stymied by Miguel Gonzalez once again he's had a lot of success against the Blue Jays 11 in a row he has set down. A lot of ground ball outs. He's getting more ground balls this year than he did last year. A lot more fly balls last season. Now he's getting the ground balls. We have seen that here tonight. Third. 
takes the liner. Aaron Sanchez trying to back up a great seven inning performance against Boston fell short and he had most of his trouble in that second inning. In that second inning he had two walks and the Orioles hit three doubles and they also had an infield single by Paredes. All told five runs on four hits. It's the only inning that he gave up runs. He threw zeros up there the rest of the time. This is Diaz in right off the bat of Martin. Two quick outs here in the summer. You know, the one thing we didn't see was a quick one, two, three inning. The Orioles have left at least one runner on base all six innings tonight. Sanchez looked like he really had great stuff in command in the first inning. He had an easy first inning, gave up a single, nothing more. Left a base runner, but then back to back walk started the second. Chris Colabello is 0 for 2. Colabello taking all the way. They're down by five. On the outside corner, 0 and 2. Two perfect pitches there. Fastball in, slider away. And then in the past, he's been throwing that splitter where he gets to two strikes, but tonight he's been using his curveball a little bit more. Looks like they're going to throw something down and away. That's the curveball pulled on the ground. Machado takes his time. Another quick hitting for Gonzalez. He's through seven, shutting out the Blue Jays on just two hits. They played the AL East 28 times, and after this game tonight, they'll switch gears and play the Houston Astros for four. So the Blue Jays will then enjoy a little bit different baseball after seeing the East for 28 games out of their first 35. We're going to go out west, American League West. We got the Houston Astros, the first place Houston Astros, and then the Angels come to town. They're the second place team out there, and then Seattle. Felix, they come to town. Those are our next three series. So we're going to try out the American League West now. Houston losing tonight to San Francisco, one to nothing there in the fourth inning in Houston. J.J. Hardy, he's over two. High fly ball to left field, Carrera. 
moves under it and makes the catch one down. Liam Hendricks entered the game with two outs and two on. He hit Adam Jones to load the bases, then he got Chris Davis to fly out. The and if he could just finish off this ball game, whatever happens here. Blue Jays will be relatively strong in the bullpen heading into that four game series down in Houston. The pitching matchup for the opener on Thursday night we mentioned Drew Hutchison at 3 and 0 will go up against Roberto Hernandez. Friday night the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey and Dallas Keuchel is off to a great start the left hander for the Astros. Keuchel is 4 and 0. On Saturday, Marco Estrada and Scott Feldman, and then Burley against Colin McHugh on Sunday, the finale of the road trip. And the Houston Astros are 20 and 13. So in the past, it used to be, hey, let's get a shot at Houston. And I'm more. They're playing well, and they have a unique combination of power and speed. They steal bases and hit home runs. Houston for. The season, just a 2.24 average. They're last in the American League in batting average, but they have scored 141 runs. That's middle of the pack because they hit home runs. They have 46 home runs. That leads the American League. They also lead the American League with 36 steals, and they've only been caught nine times. Mm. They're a lot like this Oriole team. The Oriole team hits a lot of home runs. But the Orioles are hitting 265 as a club coming into this game. No home runs in the game tonight. Buck Showalter's team going to be home for a long stretch of games. That's pretty good pitch ball all over the inside corner. And now it's time for the drive of the game. It's presented by the 2015 Honda CRV Motor Trends 2015 Sport Utility of the Year. They haven't hit any home runs, but they've hit a lot of doubles, and this is going to be our drive of the game. A two strike third ball to Caleb Joseph after a couple of walks, a sack bump, and then this double down the left field line. One of four doubles tonight by the Baltimore Orioles. Caleb Joseph with a two run double, the drive of the game. For Joseph, RBI's number 11 and 12. That started off that five run inning. Joseph has done a good job filling in for their regular catcher, Matt Weeders, going back to last season. Weeders had Tommy John surgery last June. He's looking for a return in June. There's the runner going. Russell Martin makes a terrific throw. Oh, my! What a jump. Low got. And Martin never ever gives up in an attempt to throw out a base runner. That's the 12th base runner he's thrown out. He's also picked off a runner. Wow. He is so fast. Watch how quickly Russell Martin comes firing. The transfer from the glove to the hand, the quick feet to get himself into throwing position. David Lowe got a great jump. He is a fast runner, but he is thrown out. By Russell Martin. Watch the tag one more time. Right down on the elbow before that hand can get there. You can't make a better throw than that. He got a running start. I didn't think he had a shot at him. Martin has caught 12 base runners now. He's picked off one, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Derek Norris of the Padres has thrown out 13 base runners, but he's given up 23 stolen bases. Martin has allowed just 14. Wow, he's so quick behind the plate. You know, we watched him from afar. We haven't had a chance to watch him day in and day out, but you're so impressed with the way he calls a game and how he runs the show back there. And then when a guy's try to steal, forget about it. Ground ball. Good goings. Joseph is out. Russell Martin threw out David Lowe to erase that base on balls. We'll go to the eighth. The Blue Jays trail by five.
and the Rangers are hooked up and it's all on CBC so make sure you check it out it's one one in the second with about 440 to go. So make sure you check that out nothing like game seven action in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Miguel Gonzalez has been terrific tonight just to walk four strikeouts he's scattered just two hits Travis and Bautista two singles through seven innings. And that is it last time the bait the Blue Jays had a base runner. You have to go all the way back to the third inning. They had it set up that inning, didn't they? Second and third, nobody out and could not score a run. Got a hit batter and a base hit and couldn't get anything going. Second and third, nobody out. And then they had the base running mistake by Carrera at third. He got tagged out for the first out of the inning and then they got the double play. And that's it. Their last scoring threat. Blue Jays have not been shut out this season. They're one of three American League teams not to be shut out the Yankees, the Tigers, and the Jays. Another streak on the line. The Blue Jays have hit doubles in 31 consecutive games. The Blue Jays franchise record is 32. That happened back in 2007. One and two to Pilar. He's leading off the eighth inning. It's Pilar, Goins, and Carrera. The Orioles bullpen just sitting back and watching. Move that ball around in and out. They haven't moved because Gonzalez hasn't even thrown 80 pitches yet. He has four strikeouts walked a batter that came way back in the first but he has been pounding that strike zone. Got to be a breaking ball right here after that inside fastball. There it is off the plate. It's a full count. Ryan Goins will be next. Ball four. Up and away. Lead off walk for Pilar. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Great shot of Oriole Park at Camden Yards from the perspective of the Inner Harbor here in Baltimore. Pilar's at first with the leadoff walk. Ryan Goins, the shortstop. There's a strike. A nice running fastball right there, right on the outside corner. For the most part, he's kept the ball down tonight. Looks good. There's a little loop toward right. This is trouble. It's going to drop for a base hit. Poor moves to second. Goins has the third Blue Jay hit of the night. Hey, you never know. Two aboard here in the eighth. Nobody out. You know, we have seen this all season long when the bottom of the order gets something going for the Jays and then they turn it around. This is a slider. Uh, Goins fights off. Dumps it in front of Diaz in right field when the bottom of the order gets things going, get on base, and they turn that lineup over. That's when the Blue Jays have had their big innings. Danny Valencia will bat for Ezekiel Carrera here in the eighth, batting for the number nine hitter. Up and away. Still no action in the Orioles' bullpen. Ball in the strike. 
now they're starting to move around down in the Orioles pen. Darren O'Day, that's his first warm up toss. That's been a good pitch for him tonight. That slider, you see Darren O'Day, you also see that guy right there. That's been a great matchup over the last couple of years. Got to get there first. A ball and two strikes to the pinch hitter Valencia. This has popped up over near the Orioles dugout and off the dugout into the seats. Valencia is over five this season as a pinch hitter. John Gibbons chose Valencia. He had smoke on the bench. Collison and Torrey, of course. And he opted to go with Valencia here. Carrera got hit by a pitch in the third inning. But there were no signs that he was favoring that shoulder at all. Way outside. Two and two. There's smoke, a switch hitter. He's available. Tolleson, Tolley. The leadoff walk snapped a stretch of 13 straight, retired by Gonzalez. Full count. Boy, trying to throw a perfect pitch now. Those last two pitches looked like he was trying to guide the ball to the outside corner instead of throwing it there. Yeah, and it's really interesting because there are only two men on, and the Orioles have a five run cushion. If he hits it nine miles, they're still going to have a two run lead. Top of the order is coming up next. That's where you can really suffer some damage. Full count to Valencia. He's called out. Tom Hallian rings him up, puts down and away. Just a tough pitch. Three and two. He tried to go outside with a fastball missed, slider missed, and then comes right back with the fastball right at the knees, right on the corner. The only thing you can do with that is to hope to foul it off. That's the first out of the inning. Back to the top of the order. Devin Travis, one for three. Remember the Blue Jays have not been shut out so far this season. They, the Yankees and the Tigers, the only teams in the American League that have that distinction. The objective, of course, is to get that time run to the yeah. plate somehow. Of course, you're going to have to score a run if that's going to be the case. Just put together some good at bats here. Gonzalez is trying to be a little bit too fine right now, and he has found himself in trouble. Walking Pilar, giving up the blue pit. Put together a good at bat here. Find your way on base. Two and one now. We saw Bautista trying to loosen up in the dugout, and that's got to be a challenge for him. He's having those shoulder problems. It's a cool night here, and. He's normally a right fielder, but you can see he's doing whatever he can to stay as loose as possible. He gets treatment before the game to get that shoulder loosened up and ready for the game, and then tightens up over the course of nine innings. It's a fly ball to right. Deaza has plenty of room. Pilar will tag at second and move to third. Now there are two outs. Still has a good fastball. That ball got in on Devin Travis and muscled the ball to right field. Another streak that's in jeopardy tonight. The Blue Jays have hit doubles in 31 straight. Of course, they have three singles tonight. That's it. Josh Donaldson has walked, reached on the fielder's choice, and grounded out to third. He has a six game hit streak that's in jeopardy as well.
O'Day certainly has plenty of time to be ready. I'm sure it doesn't take him that long. You surprised they're holding the runner on at first base? Yeah, it doesn't really. That run doesn't mean anything. Not a thing. And Ryan's really not a threat to steal. He hasn't had a steal attempt this year. Josh can shoot a ball to right field to keep the inning going. And we have seen Donaldson hit balls to right field. But yeah, it's kind of curious how they have elected to hold the runner on at first. Just enough off the velocity to have the timing disrupted. Just a little slider that he did yeah. something off of. He has spun a very good slider tonight. Not too many splitters. We haven't seen that. That's one of his best pitchers this year against that slider. Batters are hitting just a buck sixty. One and two to Donaldson. Now it's two and two. Swing out over the plate, yeah, middle, was, middle, and he fouled it back. That was the pitch right there that he has normally hit. Made a mistake. It looked like they wanted to show him something up high, high fastball. But he missed his spot. Gonzalez has one career complete game. He's had four eight inning outings. And he's trying to make it five here. Donaldson. <laughs> Lots of umpires in the stand, but you can see number six run off the plate inside. Jose Bautista, Darren O'Day, they have a history, and if Donaldson reaches, we might see them face each other once again. Bautista has hit four home runs against O'Day. Full count. They take too much time for Donaldson, and now they're going to talk about this pitch. So Donaldson now with a full count, and Buck Showalter checking with his pitching coach, Dave Wallace. Big pitch right here. What's he going to go to? He walked it. Ball gets away, and Pilar's going to score. So the Blue Jays won't be shut out. Pilar comes in on the pitch that gets away from Joseph. And Buck Showalter's already out of the dugout, and we're going to see it once again. Bautista is the batter. Pilar scores the first run for the Blue Jays. Looked like a splitter from Gonzalez, three and two. Maybe the first one we've yeah. seen in a while. And that Gonzalez really... will go seven and two thirds. He gets a nice round of applause and take a look. It is a splitter. There it is, right there, and it handcuffs Caleb Joseph. He just misses it. Lots of movement on that one, and it goes all the way to the backstop. The run scores. Donaldson goes to first base, and Gonzalez goes to the dugout. And now Bautista will bat with two outs and two on. 
against Darren O'Day, and there's a lot of history between these two. If you've been watching this over the last couple of years, Darren O'Day strikes out Bautista, skips off the mound at Rogers Center, and Jose notices that, and then he says something to him. Next time they face each other, Jose gets the better of this one. A line drive home run down the left field line, and now, hey, now say something as he says to O'Day. Okay, no problem. O'Day this year had something to say the first time they met. And Jose homered off him. And remember the skip that uh, O'Day did? Well, Jose skips out of the batter's box. And O'Day thought that was funny as he takes him deep. It's just been back and forth between these two. The ultimate pitcher versus hitter. And Jose Bautista has won it every time. Darren O'Day against Bautista has pitched reasonably well. He's five for 15, but four of those five hits have been home runs for Bautista. And look at the numbers that he has put up this season. An earned run average of 0 0.77, 11 innings, right-handers hitting 091, averaging 10 strikeouts, 13 strikeouts and just one walk this year. A sinker slider type of pitcher. He comes from down under like that. So. Hitters have to pick on one of those pitches and Bautista. I, I don't know if he sits on that slider. He looks for, for it from O'Day or he's picked something up from Darren O'Day, but he's had a lot of success against the right hander. Well, it's a 5-1 Oriole lead. Goins at second, Donaldson at first, Bautista facing O'Day. He gets sawed off, and O'Day will throw the first, and the inning is over. O'Day retires Bautista on one pitch. The Blue Jays are on the board. But we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 5 1 game. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zorn. the ball game and Brett has really started to throw the ball very well. He had a little bit of a shoulder problem in spring training. He didn't get up to speed coming out of the shoot, but everything is good right now. And there are his numbers 13 games already this season 10 innings it's not a safe situation with the Blue Jays down with this first time that we have seen Brett in this series. So a little tune up before we head off to to Houston last work on the 10th in that series in Boston. Danny Valencia stays in the ball game and is out in left field. Valencia pinch hit for Carrera. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Orioles scored all five runs in the bottom of the second. The Blue Jays got on the board in the eighth. 5 1 Baltimore.
Gray Navarro for three. He hits his high and deep down the left field line. This is a home run. Navarro with the home run just inside the foul pole. That's his first big league home run. It comes here in the eighth inning, and Navarro just called back up from the minor leagues, takes seats deep for his first big league homer. Wow. It's not very far down the left field line. This is his rookie season. Major League Service none coming in here. Navarro's trying to wish this ball fair. And it stays fair. He hit 46 minor league home runs. That's his first big league home run. He has bounced around from Arizona, Kansas City, Cincinnati, and now Baltimore. And he gets his first big league homer with the Orioles. Well, the Orioles get that run back immediately. Manny Machado, one for four tonight. Six runs on eight hits for the Orioles, a single run on three hits for the Blue Jays. It's a team, the Baltimore Orioles. They have hit at least 200 home runs for three straight seasons, and they're doing it again this year. And they lost a couple of big bats, and certainly the Nelson Cruz bat is a big void in their power. Well, they don't seem to be phased much by it. Yeah, they still have plenty of power. <laughs> Miguel Gonzalez, he's been the star of the night for Baltimore. Gonzalez, seven and two thirds, a three hit ball. The only run he allowed was an unearned run. Machado fights off that pitch down and in. The Blue Jays will go on to. Houston after this game by the Astros for four. The Orioles will have tomorrow off and then the Angels come in they have an off day on Monday then Seattle. So they are home for a long stretch. This is popped up up the third base foul line. Donaldson calls Martin off and makes the catch. Save during the Lawn and Garden Expert Sale. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Cool night here in Baltimore. Last night it was a little bit muggy and kind of hot. But tonight it's a different story. Blue Jays trail six to one. The Orioles are in a stretch of 15 of 18 home games, including this series, the three game series. The only games they'll play away, they'll fly down to Miami and play the Marlins three games over a weekend series on the 22nd. But everything else, 15 of 18, right here at home. And they pointed to this part of their schedule in the early part of maybe making up some ground and. Getting themselves organized. We saw Buck Showalter bring his team out yesterday and hold what looked like a spring training type of workout as they're, they're home and they've got a little bit more time to do that. They are out early again today working on some fundamentals. Well, and they really didn't play a real clean game here tonight. Mm -hmm. Alejandro Diaz made a bad throw. They've had a wild pitch, a pass ball, a little bit of everything. But Gonzalez was on his game. It was a curveball. And a good one. Yeah. 
You mentioned Brett Cecil working for the first time in this series. You certainly don't want his pitch count to be too high with a four game series. Coming up next. That's right. You might need him tomorrow. The Aza strikes out, two down. Miguel Gonzalez in line for his fourth win of the season was tough tonight. Seven and two thirds. He allows just three singles. Didn't allow an earned run. The only run scored on the pass ball. Three walks, five strikeouts. And his, he continues to dominate the Blue Jays. Yeah, his longest outing of the season. Right there to tonight. And if he would win that, he would go to seven and one against the Blue Jays in his career. Ball is hit to right. Colabello is back and it's over his head. Bounces off the wall. Jimmy Grace, his second hit over the night. Switch hitter, boy, he can swing it from both sides of the plate. Dead early, too. First pitch, he's 444 on that first pitch. And he got a first pitch from Red Cecil out over the plate. He put a charge into it the other way. He has been on base now four times tonight. That ball bounces off the wall. Brady says bounced around originally signed by the Yankees. Played in Houston parts of a couple of seasons Kansas City Baltimore last year 18 games. He's going to get a chance to play a lot here. Yeah. Yep. And D.H. You know, they, if they could find a position for him to play, that would really help. But right now, the way he's swinging, you can't take his bat out of their lineup. He has played second, he's played some third, and in the outfield. But he's a hitter. Mm -hmm. And probably needs some help at second base with Ryan Flaherty going back on the disabled list. He was out working at second base today. He so bounces that change up in the dirt. Steve Delbar now getting loose. You mentioned you don't want Chase to throw too many pitches and have him unavailable for tomorrow. Is a good change up. Fly ball into center. Routine play for Pilar. He makes the catch. The inning is over. So we'll go to the ninth. Navarro hits a home run off Cecil at 6 1 Baltimore. It kind of shown Martin and Colabello.
And the Rangers knotted up at one in the third, so make sure you check that out. Game seven, nothing like it. We'll be back at you tomorrow from Houston, first and four. Drew Hutchison against Roberto Hernandez in the opener of that four game series. Darren O'Day stays in to work the top of the ninth. He got Bautista to end the eighth. Blue Jays scored a run on a pass ball, so their streak of not being shut out is still intact. Now they need a double. Got that streak. And five runs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll take the runs over the double. Encarnacion has not reached base yet. He's 0 for 3, and he had reached in 14 straight games. He has had his troubles against Darren O'Day in the past, also. Cannot seem to pick up the baseball against Darren O'Day. O'Day's a very good setup man. He is a good compliment to their closer, Zach Britton. Different look, totally. Not a hard thrower, but yeah. that sidearm action, tough to pick up. Setup man can come in all shapes and sizes, can't they? Some teams have flamethrowers as their setup men. Some teams have these types of specialists where the sidearm, where you get a lot of ground ball outs, or the slider. There are the numbers right there for Edwin against O'Day. That sweeper way outside, it's two and two. Blue Jays' best opportunity tonight came in the third. And they were down five nothing and had runners at second and third with nobody out. Donaldson, Bautista, and Connison, the scheduled batters, and then they had a base running mistake by Carrera at third. He got tagged off third base. And then Bautista hit into a double play. And just like that, that great opportunity to down the drain. Yeah, and then four straight innings, three up, three down by Miguel Gonzalez before the Blue Jays got a base runner in the eighth inning, a walk. Leoff walked to Pilar and he scored. And Connison strikes out. With one down, now it's time for a preview of what's coming up next on Sportsnet Central. Here's Ken Reed and Malka Osman. Thank you, Malka. Certainly a lot to talk about tonight. The Cardinals were shut out on just one hit tonight. Vancouver goes eight innings and punches out 18. Russell Martin drives one in to left. David Lowe over to cut it off. Russell's first hit. Just the fourth hit for the Jays. All singles. All singles. Three of them to right field, and that was the first one that was pulled. Martin was robbed of a hit in the fourth inning. On a nice play by the second baseman. Chris Colabello batting with one out. He has struck out and grounded out twice. There's that sweeping breaking ball. He starts that ball at the player's hip, batter's hip, and then it just breaks over and catches the inside corner. And if you're guessing fastball that runs into you, if you're a right-handed hitter, it freezes you. And all of a sudden you see it start to spin and hit the inside part of the plate. I think against pitchers like this early in the count, you pick on one pitch. You either sit on the fastball or you sit on that slider until you get the two strikes. Then you just have to find the baseball. Calabella behind quickly 0-2. You start guessing with a guy like this, yeah. forget it. You'll be flailing. But you're right now with two strikes, though, Colabella, all they can do is shorten up and try to protect the strike zone. Look at the location of those two pitches. One was a breaking ball, one was a fastball. 
coupled inside like that. Now you get them thinking about that. This is where you sweep that ball away from the right hander. See if you go after it. And he did. Second strikeout of the inning. The Blue Jays down to their final. Up. You get a hitter starting to think on the inside part of the plate. And again, you can't guess. And then this guy throws from down under like that. You see the ball, you just sweep it right off the plate. Hard to lay off of that one. Kevin Pillar has scored the only Blue Jay run tonight. Night ten to cheer the Orioles win the opener five to two. The Blue Jays have the upper hand in the season series. They've won six of the first eight going into this game tonight. Pilar stays alive as he fights off that inside pitch. Wow. Slider, backup slider on the inner half. Jim Machado from third goes on the run. Holding. The Orioles win it 6 1. They take the series two games to one.